Well, good morning, Kingdom Saints, viewers, subscribers. Welcome to my channel there, there, boys. Yeah, yeah, it's three in the morning, but it's my wake-up time. I'm always up at three in the morning, you feel me? It's just the time that I wake up. So the word, the good the Lord, Lord hit me with the word to uh, go here and evangelize to y'all this morning, you know what I'm saying? This is for all the viewers who don't know Jesus, you know what I'm saying? We only have one chance to come to the Lord. One chance to come to Jesus. This is our last opportunity, our last chance. As in they say, the final credits. When you see a movie, you see those final credits? Don't know where you're gonna see that movie if you go through that movie again. And that's when Jesus comes, when you go see Jesus, when you get saved, you go see Jesus, it's the final credits, the end call. You know what I'm saying? As I used to say at the club, when I used to go to the club, you know what I'm saying? And yes, I remember the time that they have that last call. 3.45, Fridays and Saturdays, 3.45 a.m., when the announcer says, last call for alcohol, y'all. Well, guess what? When they used to say, last call for alcohol, y'all. Everybody's running to the bar to get that last drink. Me, I would get two more drinks. Put it in my back pocket so I have something to take home with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but guess what? It's the last call for Jesus, y'all. Last call for Jesus, y'all. So I went through the run and get a taste of the spirit. Get a drink of the real spirit. You know what I'm saying? Not the evil spirit that you see in the liquor stores where it's wines and spirits. Yes. When you're drinking alcohol, you're drinking spirits. Evil spirits are in that drink. You know what I'm saying? So Jesus is the solution. <laughs> for this world's pollution. Jesus is the solution for this world's pollution. He who died on the cross for our sins to set us free. To set us free from what? The condemnation of the wicked, the condemnation of this world, and the condemnation of everything that you're doing right now. Everything that's taking you to the abyss because you're living in sin. Let Jesus break those bondage, break those chains, and break that bondage to sin, because only Jesus can do it. There is no other doctrine. There is no other doctrine. There is no such thing as religion when it comes to Jesus. There's only faith in Jesus. That's the only thing you need is faith. Don't worry about religions. Don't listen to these false doctrines. This prosperity gospel. They're all going down on judgment. Everything in this world is going down on judgment. Except the chosen ones. The church. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to listen to these false teachers. We don't need to listen to these false pastors. We don't need to listen to these false doctrines. We need to read the Bible and learn scriptures and learn God's word and learn about Jesus and learn about the gospel. God's only son provides eternal life. That's the gospel. That's the whole of the gospel. The gospel is all about God's only son provides eternal life. Huh? Am I right about it? So please, please come to Jesus today because today could be your day of salvation. There is no back door to Jesus. There's no back door. Don't listen to what people say. There's many, 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 many ways to Jesus. There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the truth the life and the way and he and he is the only way and he is my way and he's just not my way he's my way of life and it's not just my way of life he's my way of living because he did he did it all for me on the cross so that 
our souls won't be lost. You must come to Jesus today. You must come to Jesus today. We don't have that much time because life is not guaranteed. I'll ask anybody on the streets, when are you going to die? Do you know? And if you say yes, I'm going to call you a liar to your face because only God knows your appointed time. For God said it is appointed once for man to die and then the judgment. Don't wait until the judgment because it's going to be too late, my brothers and sisters. It's going to be too late. And the worst thing... I'm having trouble hearing. Can you say that again? Make me a sandwich. Okay, you're a sandwich. Why, I ought to. The worst thing you want to hear from Jesus when he comes with his church, his pride is, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Believe me, that's going to be the worst day of your life. You think... You think this world is bad right now? This ain't nothing. This is Disneyland compared to when Jesus comes and you hear those words. When you hear those words, God is going to turn his head away from you. And he's going to point to the abyss. That's going to be your final destination. Because you refused the salvation and you chose the decimation of this wicked nation through God's proclamation that we are all in dire eradication and this world is coming to a dire cessation. So don't refuse the salvation and walk with Jesus in justification and give him a warm embrace as you see him face to face and he'll take you with him to his heavenly habitation. Am I right about it? Amen. You know why it is that so many people hate us when we preach the gospel? You know why? Because the demons hate us. The demons hate the word of God. They hate hearing the truth. They hate it. They hate it. They hate it. So they come with against us. Even the demons know that Jesus is the Son of God. Even the demons knew of Jesus because they called him the Son of God. Why hast thou come to torment us? It is not our time. Hmm? Come on. Stop playing with me here, that boy. This is why Everything in this world that's happening right now, this is why it's happening. Because Jesus is preparing to return. Jesus is preparing his return to get his church to be, for us to be raptured up. Everything that's happening in this world right now has already been prophesied. We're, we are not surprised that at what's going on in this world right now. We're not surprised one bit because we already know. We read Revelations. We read Scriptures. We know. We know that this, 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 this is just something like waiting in line at the grocery store until you get your food. Take it home and you, get, you got your food. Waiting in line to pay for your food. You know what I'm saying? It's just a waiting period for us. We're going to receive Jesus. We're going to have eternal life. That's why it does not worry us one bit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, he who paid the price for all of our sins at the cross is calling upon you. The master is calling upon you right now to come to him. Because why? Because he loves you. He loves you. For God so loved the world that he sent us his only begotten son so that whoever believeth in him may not perish but have eternal life. For Jesus said, I did not come to condemn the world. I came
came to save the world. Don't worry about what you've done. Don't worry about what you're doing. He already knows all about that. Yet he's offering you salvation. He's offering you eternal life. He's offering you a chance. He's offering to forgive you of all of your sins. All of your sins and make you clean, make you whole, make you complete. You can trample the enemy's head every day with your feet. You'll be victorious. You will be his chosen one because you have decided today to come to Jesus. Romans 10.9 Acknowledge Jesus Confess all your sins to God the Father. Believe that Jesus is, has been resurrected. Believe that Jesus is the, the deliverer. Believe in him and believe that he rose from the dead. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Confess all your sins to God the Father, and you will be saved. It doesn't say you might be saved. It doesn't say, I'll th Jesus didn't say, I'll think about it. Jesus said, you will be saved. Will be saved. One faith. One baptism, one God, you will be saved. So then, what's taking you so long to think about it? Do you want to go through the tribulations and the rat? I'm not sure what went wrong. Do you want to go through the tribulations and the wrath that is to come? Are you prepared for that? It's not going to be a, a good a good day when that happens for anybody who's not walking in Christ. And these are things that has already been foretold and prophesied to us by the King, by Jesus. Amen. So look. Make your decision, but choose wisely. You can go on that path, which is the wide road to destruction. Or you can choose the narrow road to eternal life. Destruction, eternal life. That's a no-brainer for me. I choose that eternal life any day. Give me Jesus any day. Because that road to destruction, nah, been there, done that. It was not fun. It was not fun. Because I could see myself being pulled deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the abyss. Amen. Because that's where I was headed. And it was my own decision. It was my own rebellion. It was me because I was loving my sins more than I loved Jesus. Until that day, I came to the end of myself and I said, you know what? This is the end of the road for this dark world for me. And I've been walking in the life of Jesus ever since. So I urge you, brethren, brothers and sisters, everybody walking in darkness right now, I urge you to come to the Lord. Receive his power and authority. Receive the blessings that God the Father will give you. Receive a new life. You will be a new creation. And... You will be made white. Jesus said he will make you white as snow. What does this mean? White as snow. It means you'll be clean, cleansed, like an unblemished lamb. 
Just like Jesus, who was the lamb slain, who overcame, and is coming back once again to reclaim the kingdom of heaven. Amen, amen. Let the saints say amen. I know a lot of y'all are thinking, why is this guy up at three in the morning preaching Jesus? Because Jesus told me to. Because Jesus wakes me up at 3 every morning. Eh. Sometimes I go right back to sleep. Sometimes it's for a reason. This is one of the reasons. Right here. Because I want to reach out to somebody today. Well, this morning. And bring them to the truth and the love of the Lord Almighty, the King of Kings, the Lion from the tribe of Judah is waiting for you. And I'm telling you on that day, on that great getting up day, there's gonna be nowhere to hide. There's gonna be nowhere to run. You know what scripture says? Scripture says many will be running to and fro, hiding in caves. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And many will be rebellious. Many will be blaspheming the name of the Lord. Many will be cussing God out. Because they hate the truth. And they already know their final destination. You know what I'm saying? Don't be one. Don't be one of them. You want to be in a chosen formation. You want to be chosen. You want to be part of part of the kingdom of God. Because you'll be <clears throat> always protected. Never neglected. These vessels he has selected. And we do his will as requested. Am I right about it? That's where you want to be. You want to be in the kingdom of God formation when Jesus comes. And we'll all go up to meet the Lord in the air. That's what you want. Eternal life with Jesus. No longer living in condemnation. Ever since Jesus came to me, ever since I asked for Jesus, and he filled me up with the goodness of him, I haven't had a worry or care in the world. Everything that I used to worry about, money, women, Jobs, finances, whatever, life, everything. I don't worry about none of that no more. I worry about my brothers and sisters that need to hear the word. That's the only thing I worry about, basically. But I'm telling you, out of everything that he put me out of, I was not worthy. I didn't deserve all that goodness. I didn't deserve it. None of us are worthy. For scripture says no one is worthy. No, not one. Scripture also says we are all as filthy rags. But yet, God loved us so much that while, we, while Jesus was still yet dying on the cross, while we were still sinners, he saved us all. Oh, there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood to save anyone. You can move mountains because Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard, you can say to this mountain to move. 
and it shall move. That's a metaphor. Jesus loved to talk in parables. He loved to talk in parables. That means you you can overcome anything in this world, even if it's as big as a mountain. Jesus will take it off of you because Jesus said, Come to me, you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Jesus also said, Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's not a thing in this world that Jesus can't take off of you. I don't care if it's alcoholism, despair, depression, homosexuality, lesbianism, whatever you're going through in life, everything, gang banging, if you're a gang banger, you want to come out of that fornicating or adultery, if you have a murderous heart, if you have hate in your heart, Jesus, God said he would take that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh so that you can come to fully understand God in all his glory and all his love and in all his compassion that he has for each and every one of us. Amen. 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 And I don't want you to think about it too long because this could be your last and only opportunity. We don't know when we're going to die. No one knows when we're going to die. But we are knowing and we have assuredness that when we do go, us born again, us Christians, us disciples, us followers of the Nazarene, we know that we have eternal life so we don't fear death. Oh, death, where is your sting? <laughs> Jesus said, I rose from the dead, and so shall you. Jesus said, I have overcome death, and so shall you. Jesus said, I am an overcomer, and so shall you. He overcame the world, he overcame death, and so shall we. We have that promise. We have that guarantee because it was already done by the blood. Everything you have right now, everything you have, your car, your house, your finances, your mama, your dada, your husband, your wife, your kids, this world, and your life is temporary, temporary, but Jesus is permanent. Jesus is permanent. He was, he is, and he is to come. Am I right about it? This is why you need to really, really break free from the bondage that Satan has on you. Break those chains. Let Jesus break those chains. Only he can break those chains. Jesus has the key. Jesus has the key, the only key that will break all those chains that Satan has you bound around like this every day. Jesus will take those chains and he will break every last link in that chain. And he will open doors ahead of you and close the doors behind you that only he can open and close. Because he has the keys of death. He took it from Satan. And he told Satan, your time is coming. Your time is coming. Then he 
ascended. Don't you know that Jesus descended? Before he ascended, he descended and freed Abraham's bosom and took all the saints with him to heaven. And he took those keys from Satan. The keys of death is now in the hands of the Lord, the King of Kings. The mighty Jesus has the keys of death. Satan has no power or authority over you. Jesus does. Satan doesn't. Jesus holds all the power and all the authority. Even the demons and the devil has to ask God for permission. They can't do nothing without God's permission. The devil went to see God. And God asked Satan, From whence have you come? And Satan says, From going to and fro upon the earth. He had to have permission to bring destruction to Job. But God told him, oh, uh, Satan was talking about how he can break Job because Job was a man of great faith. Great faith. And Satan said, I bet you I can break him. God gave him permission. But God told Satan, do him no harm. Do what you will, but do him no harm. And Job stood through the fire and passed. Everything that Satan did to him, Satan could not break his faith. His faith was as great and as strong as an impenetrable fortress. His faith was outstanding. And then Satan said, okay, I'm done. Couldn't do nothing to Job, and what did God do? God multiplied everything that he had. And Job said, Father, I've lost all my relatives and friends. God said, no, you haven't, beloved one. They are with me. You will see them when you come to the Father. You will see them in heaven. There's no man on this earth that can do what Job did and to go through what Job went through. Nah, no one, no one, no one can go through that. Most people in this world give up after one day of, of troubles and struggles and they resort to, to a wickedness. I'm out of money. Hey, Chapato. Si, sí, vamos a robar este banco. Necesitamos dinero, yo necesito dinero muy, muy rápido. Make a call, go rob a bank. Make a call, go rob somebody on the street. You know what I'm saying? Lust, the pride of the flesh. These are things that Satan throws your way every day. Pride, lust, greed, deceit, betrayal. All these things come from Satan. And Satan will always, always leave you thirsty. He will always leave you wanting more and more because he not only wants you to sin, he wants you to fall so deep into sin that you're going to go to the abyss with him. That's what he does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to make sure that you are completely shattered. That you have a hardened heart. That you're so 
deep into your sins and you're loving your sins so much. You just forget all about Jesus. You just take the J out of the equation. The one who can give you the salvation and save you from the decimation of this wicked nation. That's where he wants you, right there with him. Right there. So when judgment day comes, he's going to that lake of fire. And all the sinners are going to be right there behind him, falling into that lake of fire. Billions and billions of people. Don't be one of them. Don't be one of them. Come to Jesus today because it's the only way. It's the only way. There is no other way. You need to give your life to Jesus because he loves you that much that he died for you on that cross. He died for us on that cross. Amen. Alrighty, my uh, peeps. I'm going to try to know. That I love you. Hit the like button. Right there. You want to leave a donation? Right there, that's the information. You want to join our ministry? You want to come out and evangelize with us? You want discipleship? There's my email. Thanks for watching.